Well, hello there. Thank you for tuning in to the channel formerly known as Tactical Accountants. Since it has been almost a year with no new content on our parts, I'm not gonna make any excuses for myself, just laziness, but I have a pretty good excuse for my fellow Tactical Accountant. He recently celebrated the birth of his first child, so go ahead and leave your congratulations in the comments. Otherwise, press F to pay respects for his sleep schedule. I'm on no sleep, no sleep. You don't know what it's like in there. All night long, things are creaking and cracking. The go-to micro red dot optics these days seem to be either the Aimpoint Acro P2 at the top of the totem pole. I do not have one of those for comparison today. I should say that right off the bat. Or if, like me, you are comfortable with embracing our Chinese overlords, the newest offerings from Holosun are extremely impressive, like this EPS. This is the full-size EPS, not the carry. This is also the MRS, multi-reticle system, which you can tell by the solar panel on top. Also from the newer Holosun offerings, this also peanut butter 509T. I purchased both of these sites, uh, wanted to compare them myself, and learned something surprising that is not reflected by the spec sheets on Holosun's websites or in any other videos comparing the two that I could find. Even without looking at the specs, if we just look at these two sites side by side, you can see how similar they are. Once again, we have the EPS full size on the left here in black, the peanut butter 509T on the right, the 509T, as you can tell, is slightly bigger. The actual housing here, the enclosed part, is slightly longer. It is slightly taller overall, as well as the footprint makes it slightly taller, so slightly worse for a pistol, where you would want to co-witness with irons, possibly. In terms of width, they are very, very similar. They both offer the Holosun circle dot reticle. You see it there on the EPS and there on the 509T. I happen to like the circle dot reticle um, myself on something piggyback mounted, like on this scope, because the optics sit so high and you have no consistent cheek weld or chin weld even, I find the EOTech style donut reticle easier to pick up when running and gunning. Uh, in any rate, you can turn off the circle part of the reticle on both of these. The EPS is made of aluminum. The 509T is made of titanium. They both have 10 daylight and two night vision brightness settings. They do use different batteries. The 509T uses a CR1632. The EPS uses a CR1620. Uh, that's kind of a bummer compared to a standard 2032 for both of them, but I guess there's no way to fit a battery that big in an enclosed emitter like this. But yeah, these sites are both a lot more similar than they are different, except in one way. It wouldn't be tactical accountants if I didn't weigh something on camera. The quoted weights of these two optics are very similar as well. The EPS on Holosun's website is supposed to be 1.4 ounces. 1.2 ounces on my scale today. Very impressive for an enclosed emitter that is very highly regarded in terms of reliability, durability, and so on. The 509T, Halson's website, supposed to be 1.7 ounces. 2.2 ounces. So we already have a difference of a full ounce between the EPS and the 509T, but that doesn't tell us the whole story because neither of these sites will mount directly to the common RMR footprint, which you see here on my PDP. Uh, same footprint on this Trigicon 30 millimeter piggyback mount on my BCM. The EPS utilizes the K series footprint and it requires an adapter plate to mount to RMR. So with the adapter plate, we're still only at 1.5 ounces. Unfortunately, the adapter plate for the 509T is much beefier. You can feel it even picking it up out of the box. It's almost like a low profile section of proprietary Picatinny rail that the 509T mounts to. And as a result, with its adapter plate, the 509T is a full two ounces heavier than the EPS with its adapter plate. 
Now you might be saying to yourself, two ounces isn't that much, but I'm not about to add two ounces to my fighting rifle just to have this nice peanut butter color. Unfortunately, uh, there's a gentleman on Reddit known as Holosun Josh. I have no idea if he's actually affiliated with Holosun, but when I asked him in a thread if there were any plans for a FDE EPS, he said not at this time. Now for context, we have a tried and true earlier Holosun 507C. This is an open emitter design, so less durable. In theory, uh, it also does not require an adapter plate because it is the RMR footprint. 1.5 ounces on our scale today compared to 1.5 ounces with adapter plate for a closed emitter, so extra piece of glass in there, sealing it up, full-size EPS. Uh, this is very impressive to me in terms of weight for what you get Halson really uh, stepped it up with the EPS compared to the 509T. I mentioned before, both these optics have two dedicated night vision brightness settings. Anecdotally, I used this EPS full size on this very BCM mounted piggyback at a night shoot a few weeks ago, and I was extremely impressed with the performance for passive aiming. The light transmission is excellent. I turned off the circle part of the reticle to have less uh, clutter over the target when passive aiming and i was easily able to make repeat hits at 100 yards on silhouette sized steel using the eps i was very impressed even without supplemental ir illumination unless you're in the very darkest of settings it performs extremely well all right, back in the basement for night vision footage. Uh, this is actually my mom's basement this time. I'm still not living down here, but with interest rates and home prices going the way they are, who knows what the future will hold. View is through PVS-14 with some IR illumination provided by the laser, not the illuminator, but the IR laser on my TLR2 IR. Otherwise, if I turn it off, it's just too dark down here. So first up, we have the Aimpoint Micro T2, not the Acro, but the Micro T2, considered by many to be Aimpoint's strongest night vision performer. If we look at that Cigar Store Indian down the way. Hey, Jerry, look what I got. <laughs> the T2 has no problem picking him up through the glass. It's almost like the optic isn't there. Very little loss of light transmission. Moving on to the Holosun 509T. Very similar performance to the Aimpoint, I would say. Uh, impressively so. It's hard to discern any loss of light transmission through the glass. The EPS performs very similarly to my eye, perhaps a little better than the 509T. Uh, because the window is wider, I suppose, and taller uh, compared to just the round tube of the aim point, to my eye, this almost looks like it's doing better than the T2, which is very high praise. As a reference, we have the older Holosun open emitter, 507C. It's not bad um, for CQB distances, like on a pistol. I think it would do just fine, but you can certainly tell there is worse light transmission through the glass the image of the target is much darker with much less contrast. So you could see the closed emitter designs have made quite a leap forward in night vision performance. In my opinion, because they are so similar in terms of price, in terms of capabilities, in terms of dimensions, I don't see why you would go with a site that is two ounces heavier with required adapter plate. So I would recommend the EPS full size over the 509T if you are in the market. Otherwise, if you bought a 509T earlier, you still have an excellent optic. So that's it. Hopefully more content coming soon, but clearly based on when our last video was posted, I can't promise anything. Hope you guys are doing well. Take care. Stay safe out there. We'll catch you next time.